Welcome to the 85th Bear Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Weingarten. What a show for you we have this afternoon as I am coming to you from the WGN Radio Studios in Chicago, Illinois. The new WGN Studios, I might mention, as they just moved across the river into a new building, a beautifully designed interior. Really excited to be here. It's a Bears Sunday in Chicago as the Bears take on the Giants in New York. They're at halftime right now. I actually just jumped in the studio. Uh, Bears lead the Giants 14-10 at the half. Akeem Hicks just helped the Bears' offense out in the red zone, being brought out to pound it in for the touchdown. A performance in the red zone is critical for teams that want to score. And the perfect time to score big is now on a new Chevy Silverado with a Chevy employee discount available for everyone. Right now, get $11,000 in total savings on the 2018 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab All-Star. Plus, get an additional $1,500 when you finance with GM Financial. It all adds up to big savings this holiday season. This podcast, The 85th Bear, is named as a tribute to the Great Bears of 1985, the Super Bowl victorious Bears of 1985. And today we have a very special guest from the 1985 Bears. Dan Hampton joins the show. Dan played for an outstanding 12 seasons, Hall of Famer, and now a Chicago Bears WGN insider. Here is Dan Hampton. Dan, thanks so much for joining us today. Ben, it's a pleasure. And I got to tell you, when you told me, hey, you're going to college in Boston, I said, hey, I remember some people from Boston that I ran into about 30-something years ago. It was called the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And uh, forever and a day, we uh, will always have a history together. Absolutely. And nothing like a Bears Sunday in Chicago as we have today. Uh, Close game against the Giants. What do you? What have you been seeing from Chase Daniels today in his second game in well, the Bears' uh, offense? Well, and see, again, it, the best laid plans of mice and men. When you draft a young quarterback, as high as we did, Mitchell Trubisky, you almost think this guy's not going to get hurt. He's going to play all the time. Well, fortunately, we got a backup that we feel is not only competent but capable. He won uh, the game against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving 11 days ago. But today, not so good. The weather's very unfavorable for quarterbacks. He's not the biggest guy. Probably doesn't have, you know, very big hands. And he doesn't seem to be able to, you know, control where the ball's going to be thrown. He's already thrown two interceptions. And uh, at some point, you have to kind of say, okay, I, I need to quit forcing it. I need to rely on the rest of the guys on offense, which would be the running game, and uh, see if we can uh, – try to find a way to put, keep the ball, possess the time, and, and score when we can, but basically uh, play keep away and find a way to win. We'll see how Chase progresses in the second half of the game. The Bears offense has a new look this season, bringing in a variety of weapons, Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, and Alan, uh, Anthony Miller. They, the Bears don't have the key player that you're trying to get the ball to. They don't have an Odell who you're looking for, or a Barkley to uh, pound the ball inside. But they have a, this versatility of weapons. Uh, Allen Robinson can go up and get the ball. Anthony Miller can do a bit of both. Uh, t- uh, Gabriel, a speedster guy. How have these weapons helped Trubisky in developing an offense? I've been around here a long time. You know, I played with some pretty special people. Walter Payton was one of the greats to ever play. But I'm telling you right now, we have more firepower as far as the skill level on our offense than we've ever had here in Chicago. Those two, well, actually three receivers you talked about. Taylor Gabriel is so much better than I thought he was. He's, he, he is a beautiful addition to this team. He makes play after play after play. Allen Robinson made a play earlier today on a catch on the sidelines that I said that may have been the best catch I've ever seen a Bear receiver make. Until about 10 minutes later, he made a better one when he took the ball off of a cornerback's head and put the Bears in position to score the touchdown and the, you know, their second, their, their only touchdown. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, when you couple couple it with, you know, Tariq Cohen and his abilities, Jordan Howard, a two-time, a thousand-yard runner. Uh, you need, nobody's mentioned Trey Burton. Trey Burton, we got from uh, the Eagles, has been a huge factor, especially in the red zone. All I can tell you is, the level of of, of performance of this offense thus far has been reasonably good, but. It's capable of so much more. You know, the big tight end, Shaheen, we haven't even really seen him get healthy, get in, into a rhythm, and he gives you a huge uh, ex, uh, you know, uh, exponent down on the uh, goal line. All, all I can tell you is, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate to 
Trubisky got hurt, and Chase is trying to do what he can. But this offense has a chance to be special. If it's not here in the next few weeks, maybe in the next year or two, the, the lid could come off because I'm telling you, they have speed and great playmakers everywhere. And Nagy has this Swiss army knife of weapons he can go through. An opponent will never really know where the attack will be coming from. Burton's on my fantasy team. I never know what to do with him because some days he'll uh, lead he the team. He had a week. bad game last week with a fumble. But, uh, but, but up until matter. then, every time they throw it to him, nobody's on him. He, he runs such excellent routes. So, there's again, and, we, and I didn't even mention Anthony Miller, maybe the best young receiver the Bears have had maybe ever. You know, that they drafted. What a pick. Oh, I'm telling you. You know, Willie Gall was a great speed, and then Dennis McKinnon was a good player. And But I'm just saying, this kid, the sky's the limit for all three of those receivers. All right, we have to wrap it up, but I'd like to thank Dan Hampton for joining us. Thanks so much. Let's hope for a Bears win. Well, let's do it. And by the way, we didn't even mention Kevin uh, Khalil Mack, the best player the Bears defense is, or the best team, the best player the Bears have had in 30 years. What an God impact. bless him. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ben. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Dan has to take off to get back on his WGN responsibilities, watch the other half of the Bears game. I will stay with you and continue on the subject of Khalil Mack. And one of the most talked about subjects in Chicago this past year, Khalil Mack has revolutionized the Bears' defense. There's really no other way to put it. He took a good Bears D under John Fox and turned them into an elite D under Matt Nagy. What a job by Ryan Pace to go out and find him, work out a deal with Gruden and the Raiders. Mac just always makes his present felt on the field, no matter what he's doing. It doesn't need to be directly involved in a play, and sure, he'll rack up the strip sacks, the sacks, the fumbles, as we've seen throughout the whole year, but he also just tears through linemen, it distracts them, clearing lanes for Akeem Hicks, Leonard Floyd. The whole Bears D has played better this year, even though a lot of the team has been a carryover from the past several years. He's explosive. He's explosive. Like, I, I, I watch guys stance, and you know if they're taking a false step or, or they're rocking a little bit, but he's just off the ball, straight power through the ground and upfield getting sacks. He, he makes this defense just a little bit more ferocious. You know, it's just, well, shoot, a lot of bit more ferocious. I, was he number one, two, three in every stat for outside linebacker defensive end in the league? He's just that player, and I think that he's going to make us just that much more um, – Feared. Khalil Mack has truly elevated this defense to the next level, this championship level defense, uh, the best we've seen in Chicago since perhaps Dan played on the 85 Bears all those years ago. Uh, and brings an energy to the team, both on defense and offense, uh, like we haven't seen in the past years. The Bears already at eight wins, hopefully soon to be nine, which matches their win total over the last two seasons combined. I think a lot of that is in thanks to Khalil Mack. And with Matt Nagy being brought in, obviously a large portion of the coaching staff has been redone, but I'm really glad they kept Vic Vangio in as defensive coordinator. Vangio uh, Fangio has always thrived in the Bears organization. The defense has always been a, a top-level D, uh, but now with the addition of Khalil Mack and the, the step of a Vakeem Hicks, Leonard Floyd, this is just something special. Watch out for Vic Vangio to be a head coach in the NFL soon. I think a lot of teams out there are in need of a defensive-minded, a brilliant coordinator like Vangio. A reminder that in the big games, it all comes down to who wants it more. Your Chevy dealer is putting it all on the line, the bottom line, with the Chevy employee discount available for everyone. Get $11,000 in total savings in a 2018 Silverado, plus get an additional $1,500 when you finance the GM Financial. Go to ChevyDriveChicago.com for details. Hey, it's fourth and goal. Go for it. Credit to the coaching staff. I think that's a reason that the Bears have been so successful this reason. Nagy, Matt Nagy is what you want in an NFL coach. He, uh, Nagy worked under Andy Reid, who is still obviously having massive success with the Chiefs. Uh, and, and everyone who works with Reid seems to come out for the better on the other end. And Nagy is definitely an example of that, now leading an underrated squad into the playoffs, hopefully. If you're not enjoying the moment, then why are you why are you playing? Uh, you know, it's it's not that hard to me. It's uh, um, I like to have fun. Uh, I like to have fun when I coach. I like our players to have fun when they play. You got to know where that line's at and where, when you're crossing the line. Now Nagy is an offensive-minded coach in charge of really a defensive powerhouse, not necessarily known for their offense, although they've shown 
huge stride this year, and obviously the Bears wouldn't be where they were without the pro- progression of Mitchell Trubisky uh, and the receivers, the wide receivers for the Bears as well, as we talked about earlier. But Nagy has elevated the Bears offensively and defensively. And we talked about Chase Daniels with Dan for a little bit earlier. Chase playing his second game as the Bears quarterback with the Trubisky shoulder injury. Uh, Trubisky expected to be back next week against the Los Angeles Rams uh, in a huge game coming up there. I think the Bears took a bit of a cautious approach this week uh, in playing Daniels, but they're they're really displaying confidence because they're saying, we can go out and beat the Giants without our star quarterback. We, we have the trust in Daniels. Now, Daniels a guy who really, I think, can be thought of as part of the coaching staff. He has worked so closely with Nagy and uh, the offensive weapons that they have on the team. He knows the playbook, uh, perhaps better than Trubisky. There were a couple plays last week where he uh, didn't quite have it. Yes, he overshot Tariq Cohen a couple times. The score could have been higher than it ended up, but in general, he threw the ball down the field. He executed the Bears' playbook. The playbook didn't need to be edited. But Dan said not the same success today, and he threw for one touchdown, but not getting the ball down the field in the same way, and the Bears have had to rely on the running game of Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen. Jordan Howard's been an interesting story this year. He hasn't quite been on the field as much as last year. He was a 1,000-yard rusher last year, and obviously that is in part to Trubisky's development. Uh, Trubisky could not throw the ball downfield last year. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, it was a bunch of dump plays, throw it to the side, yards after catch. Once in a while, he could heave a ball down the field, but the Bears really had to rely on the running game in Jordan Howard, especially with such a weapon as Howard is. But with the progression of Trubisky, you don't need to rely as heavily on the ground game as the Bears have found huge success through the air this year. Allen Robinson again making some big plays in today's game against the Giants and really showing his prowess through the whole year. I'm really glad that move came through uh, Robinson acquisition from Jacksonville uh, this offseason. But a bit of a statement made by the Bears. They're saying we're going to save Trubisky for the big game next week. Uh, Potential playoff implication game as the Bears are aiming for that top spot in the NFC uh, so they could get that bye week and not play uh, the Vikings or Redskins in a wild card game to get to the Saints or the Rams. Uh, Saints helped the Bears out by losing that strange game against the Dallas Cowboys this past week. Uh, the score proved a lot of people wrong in that game as people were expecting the Saints to win by 50. Hey, but no complaining. That's going to help out the Bears big time if the Bears can come away with a win here against the Giants and then hopefully the Rams next week. Uh, people still haven't talked about the Bears in the way that they mentioned the Saints or the Rams or the Chiefs, these high-powered offenses that just dominate the game. Uh, I can expect to put up 40 to 50 every game, but people are taking notice. The Bears have been flexed several times in that game, night game against the Vikings a couple weeks ago in which they took care of business. They've been flexed against the Rams next week, uh, the Sunday night game. They were featured in a primetime spot on Thanksgiving against the Lions. And who doesn't want to talk about a team that essentially as two offenses. Uh, the offense has stepped up this year, and the defense essentially plays as an offense because of defensive takeovers, uh, defensive touchdowns. The game against the Vikings is an example where even though the Vikings made it close at the end, it was never a game. The, the Bears' D dominated fr- from the beginning of the game, scored a couple touchdowns, and the Vikings never really stood a chance. And it's going to be quite the defensive showing next week in the Bears-Rams game on Sunday night, a potential playoff matchup there. You got Khalil Mack on one side and then Aaron Donald on the other side. He's turned himself into quite the MVP candidate with his elite power and quickness. Uh, similar style to Mack, who just rips through opponents' offensive lines. Nothing you can really do to stop him. But we'll see which team can do a better job at getting to the quarterback. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky will obviously be coming off the shoulder injury. We'll see how he integrates himself into the offense, uh, facing the pressure of such a big game. And then you got a special talent in Jared Goff on the other side, uh, who I picked up on my fantasy team after week one, and Goff proceeded to carry my fantasy team to the playoffs. He puts up the numbers week after week. Uh, But the Bears' defensive power will be the greatest challenge the Rams' offensive line has faced this year. I think it'll come down to which team's defense makes the bigger plays. Uh, Both teams have had their highlights moments through the year, the big touchdown moments. I spoke of what the Bears did to the Vikings in that Sunday night game a couple weeks ago. And then remember what the Rams managed to do against the Chiefs 
and they weren't able to limit Patrick Mahomes' ability. They couldn't stop him throwing the ball down the field, but they did manage to get to him enough to force a couple defensive turnovers, score a couple touchdowns, and that ended up being the difference maker in the eventual score. Uh, boy, I am excited for the Rams-Bears game on Sunday night, counting down the hours till that one. I think a lot of people are picking the Rams in that game, thinking the offense will be a bit too much for the Bears, but hey, we just saw a defensive powerhouse in Dallas take down the NFL-leading New Orleans Saints. No one thought that was possible. And we'll give you a full breakdown and recap of the Bears-Ram games on next week's show. We'll come to you after the game instead of during the half so we can have a recap of the full game. But I'm glad I got into the studio this week during the half. Kind of fun. Big thanks to Tom Manley for making this WGN studio recording possible. Uh, thanks to Dan for joining the show. And a big thanks to all the Bears fans out there for listening. Have a good week, guys. See you next time.